kind of think I should have saved the wine for this week. Let's talk about some bells. Spoilers ahead, so get on out of here if you haven't seen this episode. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Marsha, and welcome to Really Seriously For Real. Uh, don't worry, this is just some lemonade. Ooh, yip yapping too much. You get parched, okay? And this episode was just so hot that, um, yeah, we need to stay hydrated. I was really hating this episode. Like, not just disliking it, hating it. It was literally my least favorite episode ever in the history of Game of Thrones. But I had a chance to think about it. Um, it's still not my favorite. <laughs> it's, I mean, it goes without saying. If they had another season to flush out the story, to make everyone's motivations and emotions and uh, the directions in which they have navigated this short amount of time, yes, then of course, the amount of hate that this particular episode has been getting, likely it wouldn't have been the case. Daenerys, she's always been one of those, like, can I press the button now? Can I press it? Can I press it? Can I press it? She is always so amped and ready to blow something up. We've seen that all throughout the show's history. And the only thing that has held her back has been people around her with a more level head. She has lost those people that have helped her temper that temper of hers. So I get it, sort of. But we'll get back to her, okay? Because the first thing I want to talk about is Varys. Varys got me so mad in this episode. I mean, it was bad enough that obviously he was just in open rebellion. He was not even trying to hide that he was trying to overthrow this woman. Wasn't even trying, which has me so mad because his character was so well built uh, and, and, and so well understood as, of, of being someone that knew how to navigate this treacherous world of politics. And it's like he just got so like rah, in the last minute like he couldn't help himself right um so it's just unfathomable that he is up in this woman's house okay because he's in dragonstone and he's sending letters to different people he's trying to poison her food got this little girl even the little girls like they're watching me i don't know if i can do this he's like child child Okay, whatever, something about the realm. I don't even remember what he said because it was ridiculous. Everything he did, it was like he was just asking to die. He was just like, just put me out of my misery. But obviously, John doesn't feel comfortable with any of that. Any of that politics stuff or whatever. And then if he's showing his loyalty, like, come on, that time that he's, the time that Varys spent with Ned, he saw what Ned did and how his whole arc, it just spiraled, spiraled, spiraled out of control because Ned uh, was a noble man and that he always believes in doing the right thing. And here you are, you're standing with John. John is the same, the same as Ned. But in the end, it wasn't even, it wasn't even Varys. It was Tyrion. Tyrion's behind then turned in his own friend. That was the part that was like, wow, wow, Tyrion. And you know, you know he was doing it because he didn't want to get himself in trouble. Yeah, he was really trying very hard to be there <laughs> for Daenerys, uh, to continue to back her properly. But dang, I mean, he took out Varys. <laughs> but I guess, I don't know, I guess at the end of the day, like, what is he gonna do? Because Varys was very much like, no, this woman has got to go. And Tyrion's is like, wait, <laughs> just just give me a second. He should have told Varys, like, wait, hold on. Just, just wait for the bells. <laughs> just wait for the bells, Varys. Okay, that's what he should have done. Then everybody would see that. She's crazy. So now, all right, so now getting back to, to, to John. I'm so over him. I don't know, I'm, I'm Team Stark all the way, just, Team Stark, 
that's what I've always been. That's the house that I've always, you know, uh, pledged for. What, however you want to call it. But ah, John has me so frustrated. You're gonna tell me you can't humble yourself just a little bit. And I'm not saying to pretend to love this woman. I'm not saying to just, you know, sleep with her or whatever. But for heaven's sake, talk to her. Okay, fine, so you don't wanna kiss her. Okay, fine, you don't feel comfortable with her. Okay, fine, tell her. Why can't you say, I just don't feel comfortable because you're my aunt. That's so weird, right? Like, don't you think that's weird? Like, talk to her, talk to her. She just lost her best friend. She watched her best friend get executed in front of her. She watched another one of her child get executed in front of her. She watched one of her greatest advisors die on the battlefield. All this stuff happens so close together. Why are you not like consoling her? Why are you not talking to her? Why are you not seeing that this is something that is destroying her inside and that she needs someone to talk to and not some robot? That that just lost his uh, his love. This is the point where he should have been telling her about how he felt being betrayed by the little boy who stabbed him in the heart. You know, being betrayed by the Night's Watch. Like something, something that can bridge the gap. Again, this is what I keep on talking about. This man, he doesn't know how to bridge anything. And this is why he's gonna suck as a king. It, it, then again, he doesn't wanna be king. He doesn't need to be king because he's going to be very bad at it because he doesn't understand politics. So John, he should have been very afraid that he wasn't going to get zapped somehow or Tyrion. Uh, I'm surprised that Tyrion is still alive. Like why is Varys dead and Tyrion is not? You know, she's talking about one more time, Tyrion, one more time. She's worse than a parent. I, I'm guilty of that too. Okay. Like, ooh, if you guys, you start up one more time, I'm gonna take that phone away. And okay, and then it's like, I don't do it. <laughs> when I know I should, okay? And Daenerys, it's the same thing. What are you gonna say one more time? Tyrion has failed time after time after time. Because, I mean, like, let's face it, she ripped through this whole city very easily. Taking out all the scorpions, taking out all the ships. A little too easy as far as I'm concerned very frustrating very frustrating like you couldn't do this before but you could easily do it now but whatever Tyrion's like no don't don't use fire well guess what she was able to take out all these scorpions take out the army you know whatever if she did this from jump well first off they didn't even have uh, this massive array of scorpions she would have had both her dragons everything would have been done but I guess it's neither here nor there because we're talking about the here and now. Anyhow, I'm like jumping ahead. This is getting me mad again, I don't know. That was real slick, what she did to Tyrion, right? Cause it's like after he's all like, oh, you know, the bells, the bells, the bells. Just, just wait for the bells, okay? If they ring the bells, don't do anything, okay? So it's, first off, you already know that she's gonna go ballistic because they were stressing it way too much um so you know everything was gonna go to hell <laughs> uh so there was really no surprise there the fact that she waited until you know everything was all over and he's walking away he's halfway out the room and she's like oh by the way we got your your brother caught him trying to sneak in She didn't say anything, not until the last second. So it's like, how long did she know? Oh, I mean, I, you know, and it's, that's the funny thing because last week I forgot to even mention Jamie because Jamie had me so mad just as a, a character. I think he had me more mad the fact that he took Brienne's virginity, you know? I mean, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. They're all adults, this is what they wanted, etc. but it was just like, ew, you little trifling little summer nothing had me so mad.
took her virginity and then was like, I'm a hateful man, clearly. I don't know, so it's like, by the time it got, it came down to all his nonsense uh, in the city, I don't know, I really, I didn't care. I, I literally, I didn't care because I felt like his whole arc was just in shambles. I felt like um, he just, I don't know, he just really disappointed me in the end. And I, I really didn't have uh, an emotional connection to him at all. <laughs> I was more emotionally connected to Arya and the Hound when they were in the, the building and everything is, is uh, kind of cracking and breaking around them. Um, that was the one and only time that I got emotional. And I felt it, I felt the emotion between the two of them. I felt the love between the two of them. I mean, like, Sandor, like, which, okay, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> See what I mean? Um. When she said Sandor, like that was the first time that she had said his name that I know of and you know she was just like thank you because it was like he was her surrogate father through this whole thing you know he was there for her for all the horrible things that she went through and um and you know they knew when they parted that that was certain death for him and um and in the end uh, that's all he ever cared about was that she would be okay i absolutely love their their team and uh i love the hound i was really sad that uh he died in this episode i just wish like dang just why didn't you just push the mountain just push him through you know like it would have been so nice if he survived, but whatever, I mean, he didn't. Um, and at the end of the day, it was pretty poetic. I didn't really, like, you know, everybody's like, oh, cool game bowl. I mean, I never really cared if they did come down to, you know, the big fight or whatever, but I thought it was really well done. It was really well staged. I mean, just the look of it, it was just, whoa, <laughs> you know, the dragon flying overhead. That's what they were going for was the whole drama and the, it, and, it, 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 it was, it was. Although, was that not funny how Cersei, uh, I'm like talking so backwards of how this episode went, but was that not funny how Cersei is just like, oh, excuse me, I'll just keep, keep going, I'll just go. <laughs> because Kyburn, Kyburn was already killed, the mountain is just like, I'm not listening to any of y'all right now because all I know is that somewhere in this, whatever's left in this brain, I don't like this man, <laughs> so. So he wasn't listening to the thing, but whatever. It was very fitting that he, uh, the mountain, killed Kyburn. Kyburn, this is what you built. This is what you wanted. And now you get a little taste of your own medicine. There you go. Rest in peace. Jamie getting into the city, running into Euron. That was like a fight that I didn't need. Like I would have been more satisfied if Yara could have um, taken Euron out. Like why Jamie? whatever i mean yar wasn't part of the big picture so fine fine it was jamie whatever and jamie needed to be mortally wounded uh, but then it's like you're hopping around this whole castle how come you did not bleed out but i guess just his love for cersei just kept him going and then of course they meet each other in all this chaos it's not like they had some cell phones like where are you <laughs> you know <laughs> or look at the na the navigation like you know, she's here. As far as the two of them, I felt underwhelmed. Um, yes, fine, it was like a fitting end to them. I think because of the type of character that Cersei was, I think she got let off very easy. Like for example, I've been like holding off trying to talk about this, but Daenerys. When Daenerys is sitting there, perched at the top, bells start ringing, everybody's dropping their weapons, everything is seeming like it's over. And then she starts eyeing the Red Keep, and she's just, oh. <laughs> and you already like, oh man, oh my gosh, here we go, 
buckle your seatbelts. I thought she was gonna go straight for the red keep. I'm like, ooh, Cersei, you about to get it. You are about to get it. And that's what I was waiting for. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be so good. I mean, honestly, it's not like Cersei's gonna jump on another uh, uh, dragon and have some dragon fight. No, but I mean, just to have Cersei ducking and covering and running, you know, and the dragon's kind of getting after her, something, something. And then maybe Jamie saves her and, you know, kind of pulls her around and whatever, and they make their way and then they, they perish. But just something else. I felt like Cersei was an afterthought during, you know, this entire thing. And then, of course, we know that Daenerys didn't even go straight for the Red Keep. She just started sweeping the city. <laughs> just randomly killing people. I didn't like that, but whatever. But what I thought was very interesting, when you start out, you're like with the good guys, right? You're with John, you're with the North. By the time Daenerys starts sweeping the nation here, um, the lines are getting blurred and then flipped. Because when you're seeing Lannister soldiers and they're like trying to help the citizens and everything, uh, and then you're like John, oh my gosh, like uh, having to stop this, his own, one of his own men from raping another woman. And and then he was gonna try to kill John. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you recognize this guy? Like Daenerys, I'm, I'm, I'm here to set everyone free. I'm here to make this a better world. And yet, you just murdered all these people because you were This episode really had me uh, questioning a lot of things for these characters. And I feel like, yeah, I guess if it's going to be mirroring more of real life, then yes, some of these motivations made sense. But it, it, still, it still doesn't make it I don't know, going into the finale, I don't know. Okay, obviously, number one, you're gonna end up with John having to kill Daenerys or Arya's gonna kill Daenerys or it'd be kind of funny if Sansa kills Daenerys. Citizens are clearly gonna fear her. And but see, I would have been on like the first boat to Karth or something. I would not have been going up into King's Landing seeking refuge. I would wanna be away from the woman that she's trying to get. Uh, although clearly she wasn't trying to get Cersei. I'm saying she, Daenerys. Clearly Daenerys was not trying to get Cersei. She was just trying to get vengeance, period. What are they gonna do? Cause this is their problem, not mine. You're giving me like heart palpitations. This ain't right. Ooh, Lord. Okay, listen guys, comment down below. I'm done talking because I don't know. I think I'm still on the fence with this episode, but comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like, were you on the side of the ones that were like, oh my gosh, what have they done to our show? Or are you on the side like, you know, you gotta take what you can get. <laughs> what are you What are you thinking? What are you thinking? And go ahead, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. It helps, it really does. Thanks for watching. Until next time.